uh, familiar with the agenda? No. no. Did you guys see my Marketing? email I set up today? To the Gmail, the media account? I saw it. Alright, cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> 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 nice. Controlling the brain. I have uh, caucuses last night or two nights ago. All I know is that Twitter was like the best thing in the world during the Iowa conference. It was really beautiful. Yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. I had many laughs. It's all about the laughs. Yeah, that was good. Well, um, one thing I really want to discuss um, is communication strategies for um, the, the General Assembly. Um, eventually, it'll become our responsibility to get the word out about certain bills that are going to a vote, that are uh, that are you know about to be going to a committee or whatnot. That and you know, we need bodies in that in the chambers to be holding signs, doing something, not making noise because we still need to be somewhat respectable, in my opinion. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I personally, I think um, if we were to go into the gen the general assembly in my check, then it could it could actually harm a lot of what we're going after. Um, there's a lot of groups who are like, especially like now, who have got done a lot of work to try to, to organize and defeat HB one. And if we go in there in my check, and they and it will basically you know, stomp on everything, everything they've worked for. So it's a matter of respect for the other organizations, not for the, not for the body or the legislators or anything, but the organizations who are working with them. It's, that's an out of respect for them. Um, Quick time check. Who thinks mic checking would be a bad idea? <sighs> we can do that, GA. Just, can we just do it right now, quickly? Who thinks mic checking that would be a bad idea? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I meant bad idea being that. Oh, yeah, it's a super bad idea. I, I just do not. I'm. I do, outside of the of the general assembly is a perfect place to be an ass. Just do whatever the f you want to do. Just you know, outside of it. But when you're inside, out of respect for all the other organizations, we should be and have you know some level of respect for the for the. Um, for the process and that you know these people have worked their you know, asses off to try to do. Anyway, we I want to try to get figure out a way that will be the most uh, efficient at communicating to everybody what what's happening, when it's happening, because there's going to be times where bills are going to come up and we have like ten minutes of notice. Um, I mean, there's legislators who are out to lunch and have to leave lunch in the, in the middle of lunch because they have a vote coming up and they didn't know about. This just happens all the time. Um, so we need to be prepared. Um, I, um, Claire and I are planning on having organizing a tw not 24 hour but non uh, continuous um, presence outside of the general assembly. Like people are always ask them, so what are you occupying now? We'll tell them to the General Assembly, because that's where we're going to be in the morning till night. Not necessarily setting up tents, sleeping there, but morning to night. That's where we need to be. We need people holding signs. Those I don't think those tents are going to make much of an impact. Should we? Should we maybe go through the agenda real quick and then revisit the GA stuff? Yeah, that's yes. that's fine. I just yeah. want to not not, not to cut say, you off at yeah, all. I just want to say we need to talk about a communication strategy for, to everybody for that stuff. Um, that needs be. Before we do that, can I just give like a um, thirty second input? Yeah. Um, no. I, I think the best way to uh, alleviate the issues you mentioned about the timeliness is that you know that have that continual presence there. I I'm interested in being there personally, mm -hmm. and you know having you know 
teams there, in the little groups being like finding out this information, going inside, finding out this information, spreading it to the people that are outside, yeah. and they come in here now, we need you now. That's what's Having a, that continual presence there, so I'm all about that. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, whenever I have a chance, er, for every free moment I have, I'll be sitting inside the chambers listening to all the god awful, boring legislation, waiting for our bills to come up. Some of them. And then I'll sound the alarm when I, when they, when I know they're coming up. Ms. Claire is going to be doing the same thing. We're looking for a few volunteers, some other more brave souls to be those people inside to listen to all that boring garbage. Anyway, to the agenda. Okay, I'll go ahead and read the agenda that we have. And then I, I would think this would be the time where if you want to add something to the agenda, speak up. So we want to talk about branding, uh, the Facebook administrative group report back, just getting, you know, what's going on there. Uh, status of moving events to Google Calendar. Uh, discussing policy for each media tool. Uh, so all the social media, outside media, Occuphone. And then I also put communication strategies for Virginia General Assembly since you just mentioned that. But did we already discuss that to, to the end? No, we still need to figure out a way to communicate other than the, like, electronic means of communication. You mean talking? We can also just make another, I mean, I might be able to offer a real quick solution that fits exactly what you're looking for. Um, we can use Selly, just like we use for our action alerts, which we haven't deployed yet, but we're gathering names. Um, essentially, it, it looks like this. It's a, um, an interface that allows for free text messaging. People can sign up um, just by texting at and then a pr particular channel name um, to 23559. And then you can send instantaneously one text message to 500 people. So we can make that an opt-in sort of a system where people who are interested in getting massive numbers of texts about the General Assembly could just sign up that way. Can we make that as an as a offer or announcement at the GA on Sunday? Sure, I mean, if, if that's something you want to do. Because I, I want to make sure everyone has that, has that information starting, uh, that we have that information starting on January the 11th, the first day of the General Assembly. So that from the start we have all of our shit together. In that respect. Uh, the first, the eleventh or the eve before when they start their fundraising thing on the tenth. Um. Everyone else in Occupy Richmond is more than welcome to attend that shit. I don't care about you know making an ass of ourselves beforehand. I'm concerned about the actual bills that are being passed. The I two think are connected though. True, and that's why I'm totally you can go go for it. You know, do what do what you want to do in front of them. But I my main concern, what I'm worried about, is the actual legislation being passed. Because come June, of, of an estimated time, abortion is going to be illegal in Virginia. Most forms of of birth control are going to be illegal in Virginia. Unions may not be able to organize in Virginia. These are serious things that are very well likely to pass. And that's not even saying just you know, build momentum. That is, it's the truth. It's likely to pass. Right. It's going to pass the House. It'll probably pass the Senate and the governor's going to sign it. Right. So um, I'm, that's where my concerns are. No, I understand. So um, we, we need to have, media needs to be we need to be on, on our toes. We need to be ready at a moment's notice. Has this passed GA as a focus yet? Well, they no. Yeah. Nothing it's passed. It's like passed GA. It is in the strategy. Right. Yeah. It's it's in GA, keep that in mind. Like, in the strategy yeah. meetings, meeting. that has been, a very, uh, has been a topic of discussion. Yeah. I mean, it has been, it's been pretty much agreed upon in the, within the, the strategy meeting. So I'm planning a case. I'm planning for this in in, in, in ex expectation for. Could you make it a proposal for Sunday? It will be. Um, if, you, if, you, if you bring it forth with GA right away on Sunday. Right. Yeah, it, it was, it's, it's in the agenda for Sunday. It's just, I mean, I'm preparing, I'm getting my shit together so that when, when they do agree to it, we're, we are ready to go, ready to go into action. Like, Hit the know, ground wrong. Yes, exactly. So we need and I'm not going to wait for GA, GA to approve to start organizing this. But if you write it down, I'll type it up. Uh, all, all I need to do is say, if you send us to the GA, I can imagine they would vote it down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like we're going to be able to vote it down. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I think it's just so helpful though when Oh yeah, I'll type it up. If there's, it up. <laughs> if there's an event or so actually um, Claire's already got a uh, we actually we've already got a Google Doc going that'll that explains the GA process, the bills that are going through that are mm -hmm. bullshit and um, and the organizations we we're, we're um, willing to join forces with to help defeat those bills. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not going to be like a official endorsement of these, but it's just working with these groups in unison to defeat a specific bill. But anyway, back to the agenda. Um, the only addition I had for the agenda, which I actually, I, I just forgot to hit the send button, I've had this typed up on the computer for four days. <laughs> um, was revisit individual responsibilities within media and how they correlate to Orva as a whole. It'd be cool if we can all like readdress what exactly we've been focusing on within the parameters of the media team, so we can make sure we're hitting all the all the angles. Um, you know, just like a reassessment of who's doing what. I also have a thing too regarding communications that I want to touch on, which is <clears throat> trying to find out how effective I. I've had attempts at trying to like um, revitalize the intercommunications Google group. Uh, really not sure how effective that is in terms of like getting the message out to people. Um, the fact that I'm part of some other work groups helps because when I, as one of the people that finds out information pretty fast, I can like spread it to some other groups that it's pertinent to that I'm in and such. But like in terms of disseminating to more people, I. I'm trying to figure out the best way, and I'm really not sure how well it's working all the time. Yeah. Cool. So we want to add, um, are we cool with adding those two things to the agenda? Well, I guess three things to the agenda. We've got, um, uh, we want to look over communications for the GA, just as preemptive. Um, we want to look at um, intercom and how to effectively approach intercommunications a little bit more, and then just revisiting what each of our individual responsibilities are. Should we add that to the um, agenda at the end? and tackle the first things we have so. and then that could be the continuing agenda for our next meeting. Um, I just, I kind of wish this is um, the agenda conversation would happen before the meeting. That way we could just, I mean, just to put it on the wiki and then we can, I mean, it's hard though because it's like we want to prioritize everything mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that we know what's, you know, being put on in the meetings. Um. I assumed my point what fell under the communications umbrella. It does. That's why I didn't like add it specifically on the agenda. Okay. Cool. Well, should we start? Are we all in agreement with the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it looks like um, the first thing we have on the agenda is branding discussion. So, um, does everyone in the room know what branding is? I'm assuming we're on the media team. You must have some idea. Cool. Um, I guess if y'all don't mind, I'll hop in and talk about a couple of things that I've been discussing with people on ideas for branding. Um, in particular, um, I think uh, one important concept that we all need to keep in mind is redundancy and repetition. Uh, we need, like in the same way that we wear the patches, in the same way that a lot of us have put the sticker on the back of our phone, the more often people see Occupy Richmond around town, the more likely they are to believe that we still exist and to, to recognize that when they see it in the news and then because they recognize it, it is something that they've seen a lot of times, they're more likely to explore that content. It's like a proven strategy in the advertising world. Um, I've been thinking of different ways um, that we can start getting our image around town. Um, first and foremost, I think that we should maybe look at trying to get um, either a new logo or take the logo we have and get it on some bumper stickers. We, we, we need bumper stickers. Um, point of information on that. Um, sometime before the holidays, a different occupation actually offered to send us bumper stickers. And I gave them the address to send them to, and I don't know if they did or not. Okay, we, I can go check it tomorrow. I would like to see more of these coming out. These are, these are definitely. Nice. I mean, decals, bumper stickers, lapel stickers, buttons. So, some, something we can do too is uh, t shirts. I thought that would be a good, like, Co fundraiser thing too, yeah. and we got the silk screen exactly. stuff. So, and people would w want it, I think I too. Think so. I want to work with finance and see if we can. If I, I wanted to work with Jonathan to see if we can convert finance into a money making um, adventure as much as it's just a money management. Um, 
but because right now it's just straight money management, right. not money right, right, right. Fun, fundraising. And so I, I want to try to work with him. We'll always do that. Cool. So Good. if we can help them out anyway, then that's needed. Um, two things. One, uh, on the bumper sticker front, if if they sent those in any in any remotely timely fashion, they should have they should have been here by now. Cool. Um, the other thing is, I took an old button. And took two like the, the small stickers and put them on there and um, made my own like button. And I was actually wearing it at some events. And someone asked me like, "Are those for sale?" Mm. I can get us a button maker that we had on the Obama campaign, probably. Um, I can call one of the old people I used to work with. We can get a button maker. It's usually pretty cheap. I think it costs about ten cents for the two parts, you know, the plastic exterior and then the metal interior so to make buttons. We can make the crap out of this. So who would like to kind of take hold of maybe the task for this week to research free possibilities or small, uh, inc like small amount possibilities for those type of um, advertising? Because I know that um, Vista Prints, would you, Josh? I'd be great. Yeah. Because I know Vista Prints has free business cards. Cool. Um, so I mean. There are free options. Also, talking to other occupations, and they might have an excess amounts of buttons they made up. But if we can get free materials, first yeah. and foremost, to make them ourselves, let's do it. And then look at secondary within the confines of our of our budget. You know, um, <laughs> how much money we want to allocate for T-shirts, or if we want the T-shirts to be a fundraiser, or maybe make your own T-shirt. Um, and get pr and get print involved in this as soon as possible. Um, I think just maybe by this at the end of this week, just knowing where we can go to make these things or get free resources. Point of information on Vista Prints: you can do free business cards there, mm -hmm. with the requirement that there's an ad on the back. So, yeah. Yeah. FYI. <laughs> but I mean, we can we can work with that, and I'm I'm actually working with the welcoming committee right now. We're um, another point of information about business cards. We're gonna get a bunch of little business cards made up that have like the Occupy logo on yeah, one side. Um, has the Occupy logo on one side and then just uh, the labels, name, email, and phone number that have blanks beside them. Um, and we're gonna hand those out to all new members to fill out and hand back into us. Um, so that we'll have their information in a really kind of a cool way. Also, that means that we can all take them and put our name and contact information and we can pass it out when we're doing Orva related business. So that's another branding tool. Um, the other two, I started doing some research today. I've actually got to pull up this email I got. Um, looking into some billboards on $64.95. Also looking into how much it costs to advertise on the side of GRTC. <laughs> um, cons consider how many people see the GRTC buses every day. And specifically consider uh, the, the sorts of people who are seeing the logos on the side of the GRTC buses, the people we're trying to outreach to. Um, so those are, I mean, those are two relatively inexpensive methods that we can use to like keep our image going around town and for people who are driving by. I think that you know, we could, I, I, I'll have to pull up the exact prices, but a billboard is only like $400 a month if we get, um, we can get like 50% off because we're a nonprofit. Um, I'm gonna work on that. Non income. Yeah, um, I'm gonna work on that. Um, but like fifty percent off, and I think we can do one of the LED billboards. So we'd be right in between Kroger and VCU's. No, you don't have to print anything either. And you, and it's sustainable, right? It's totally sustainable, and it's cheaper to be on the LED, and people pay attention to that because it's color, and we can change the message whenever we have new GAs. Put it. Put it. Put it. Do they? I don't ride the bus. Car, but um, do they have advertisements inside the bus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think those would be more di target directed mm -hmm. uh, than, I mean, and much cheaper to look into you know, having those inside the bus. No? And that they're not cheaper? I mean, they're, they're probably cheaper, but the question of whether or not they work better, they yeah. definitely don't. I've worked I've, I've the bus in Richmond for a while, and nobody has any They're going to see the ads mm -hmm. on the outside of us. Well, and we can, we can actually test that. If we use it's a particular... It's more like boring, like, 
oh, we're getting driven from point A to point B. Oh, wow, I can go there and get this yeah, today. I know when I'm riding the DC it's, it's Metro, different. I'm reading yes. every advertisement inside there because I'm so bored during the well, trip. <laughs> and, and what we can do, we can actually test this theory out, right? We can test and see which method is getting us more traffic. We can put a little QR code on any of the little paper advertisements we do inside of a bus. Mm -hmm. It would be a very particular QR code for the buses that when people scan it, I know a lot of people have smartphones on the bus. I think you'd be really surprised how many people on the bus have smartphones. My point of clarification then is one, well it's two, it's a two throng thing. One, you mentioned the word target audience. Have we decided who the target audience is? Two, for branding purposes. And two, should we, if we want to do a board, wonderful, where are the parts of, of most um, traffic? for buses. I can tell you that it's probably going to be either ninth and broad or third and broad where people are waiting for the longest. Right. I've sat there for 45 mm -hmm. minutes waiting for a bus and most buses come to those two spots and anywhere right. else in the city for south side, north side, right. and Forest yeah, Hill. The so the fact is is that if you're if you're putting it next to VCU, most likely you're going to be attracting VCU students looking at that board. If you're at third and ninth what or ninth. What are you talking about? Sorry. Which routes? Seventy-four, nine, three, four, thirteen. Okay. Okay. So which buses in particular the target? Right. Okay. Who are we targeting? Who's our target audience? That's, that's, that's number one. And your ad on the bus <laughs> is going to be different than your billboard because those right. are different audiences. So right. you need to. So, I, I mean, if I, if I could put in my recommendation, it would be either ninth and broad or third and broad because you have families and people, individuals from, who are going to south side and north side from their jobs in the West End, and they're going there and they're going to be sitting there for the longest. So they're going to have the most time mm -hmm. to be looking at a bulletin board or whatever. Now, if this is on the bus and it's a bus advertisement, it's a whole different story because they're going to be traveling on those buses. But if you do one stationary ad, the, the hottest spots where the most pop, where the most traffic are are those two spots for right. the bus. But that's for a target audience, which is the and that well, and that's and also for a stationary ad. Yeah. I was more referring to the side of the bus that moves, where they have those ads. That I mean that like that's awesome because not only will the people who are waiting for the bus see it, so will all the people who are walking through Richmond. So will all the drivers. Yeah, we can um, do something so, else. You know, that's more of what I was referring to, and I'm just throwing ideas out there on ways that we can start to implicate redundancy because that's necessary with branding. Um, the other, you know, the other, the other big question I think that we'd have, well, a couple, lots of big questions, but the next big question in that line would be, do we keep the Kanawha Plaza steps that we have as our logo, or do we try to redefine it, um, or at least make an additional one? Because while we respond well to that, one of the things that pushed Occupy New York so far was that really uh, picturesque image of the ballerina on top of the bullet. It's very artsy, it's very creative, it doesn't necessarily have any direct meaning so people can interpret it however they want. Whereas, you know, we've got very explicit Kanawha Plaza steps. It's, it's black and white, which is awesome, it's very cut and dry, but it's not terribly evocative to anyone who wasn't at Kanawha. Right, right. Most of the thing, if you weren't at Kanawha, you have no idea what that is. No idea what that is. <laughs> Some Illuminati symbolism. <laughs> two friends visiting from New York over the weekend and we um, on the way to Belle Isle we stopped kind of we walked by Kiwana Plaza and they're like oh <laughs> isn't that your logo for Occupy <laughs> Richmond and I was like oh holy shit like you recognize the stairs and you correlate that, that was the logo so at the same time, it does still hold this kind of nostalgic weight because it was the beginning. Not, not every company has a logo that you can clearly understand why the heck they had that logo. It's only when you when they explain we're what not, that logo means. We're not a company, though. I'm, I'm just saying, but I mean, uh, companies tend to have logos. Even nonprofits have logos. And you're talking about you're talking about a number of different things here. The 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 the, the, uh, the ballerina on the bull wasn't a logo. It was a, Right, graphic. That's right. completely different. Yeah. I've never understood that one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not very into uh, modern art, anyways. But I, that's one I've never really figured it out. <laughs> my, my my concern would be if we're going to change the logo, if we're going to go to that, you know, effort and expense, then let's have a particular mm -hmm. goal mm -hmm. that we're trying to reach by designing it. Let's not just redesign it for mm -hmm. the fuck of it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. The current kind of like logo. Yeah. I don't have any problem with the logo at all. I well, was just. What is the concern that's, no, that's driving that? 
So, I mean, A, we're having a brain discussion, so I'm bringing up all points of view, not necessarily my points of view, right? Um, secondly, it, it's a little choppy. I love the logo. I love it. I've got it all over my computer. I've got it on everything I own, which two things. I own two things. I've got it on everything I own. Um, it's, it's not going to attract um, people who are still stuck in society and subject to flashy things, right? I think we need something a little flashier if we're trying to catch eyes on a billboard on the side of a bus. Okay. Right? Like, thinking about what exactly it is we're oh, advertising yeah, right. on, okay. something that needs to be a little bit flashier than this, you know, very... Austere. It's just graphic. Wow. Well, it's so just it very line, right? It's bland. Well, you I don't want to call it bland. bland. To me, it projects uh, complete growth. The, the lines pick you growing. In a sense, it seems like a foundation for... Um, but I mean, at the same time... Mm -hmm. yeah. All those <laughs> yeah. oh, I just think that I do like how it, like, those, of you, those of you who adhere to the, the Illuminati, like... <laughs> it's almost like Occupy is stopping this. <laughs> 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 I'm, just, I'm just saying, it, 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 you know, the whole, that whole... That whole aspect of it, and it also, I think, it, and it also it kind of goes along with that, you know, the the steps of the with the eye, whatever you say. Uh, <laughs> Occupy has has has, uh, has you know replaced that. The people have replaced that. So I don't know. It, that's what all, that's where I. It means a lot to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to mean that to other people. Well, I mean, they are steps, and steps I don't believe in the symbolize progress. progress. Um, and, and, and there's historical significance to this, and I don't want to jump around in terms of like, let's brand this, and then we have uh, currently media revolving around this, so I think we can have a branding discussion and definitely keep in mind the long term things. We don't want to every three months be changing because we've got people who are spending time on these things, and we don't want to have that time become useless. Well, that's number one. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, what I would say is, so it's the advertising campaign that is that that's sort of motivating this idea mm -hmm. of a new logo. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we like we have designers yeah. who would design us a logo, right? Number one and number two is probably also a good idea to make some more decisions about the actual campaign exactly. before we, do, before we right. design the logo. Have the logo fit into the campaign, right? Since that's, that's what's driving. They, right? Exactly. I mean, we're getting we're getting really bogged down in some right. some nuances of discussion. And number two, we should see a number of different options. Like we, you know, as many people as want, who want to yeah. come up with an idea for a logo. Why have let's all sure. get a look at them. Yeah. Let's exactly. you know what is it that. Why just have one? That's why um, I, I, I forwarded to the Gmail a week ago from Ron Skinner all of the brands that have been put up on the Occupy Together site. There are 50. I mean, the, the truth is, is that like there's we have no limit as to what kind of artistic contributions. No, no, we don't. But if, if what we're looking at is kind of the idea of saturation and reaching a kind of cultural tipping point, at least in Richmond, then you do want a kind of, you want repetition and you do want one singular kind of iconic idea, something that people will see and immediately that will be what brings us to mind and, and hopefully it would bring good things to mind. But isn't it also people? You see a person and you know, hey, I think that person is involved in Occupy. Isn't that what kind of gained us stronger is because we're a collective of different individuals? Sure, I, I, sure. What do you mean? It's, sure. it's, it's the thing is the power and the balance of not just recognizing a logo and recognizing a logo because you can go to that Facebook or that website, but recognizing a person and knowing that person's involved and I kind of want to know why because that person is something that I don't have. Are you saying putting people on buses? Yeah. Like putting think, their faces on the side of the bus? I think the more people, the more humanistic this is, the more it's going to be approachable. Like, you know, I think that's why the Occupy that, is such a good idea. I, I, I completely and totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. But that also comes with people. Like, you need the people. And so where, where do you get the people? Because at this point, like, we're, you know, as far as active population, mm -hmm. Well, I do know 
Look, we tried to do the, the commercial this week and nobody came. I mean, or to a um, Hollywood cemetery. It, 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 I don't think exactly. I don't think it was properly. It went through the right communicative channels. I think if we had really advertised it or mentioned it, maybe, maybe mentioned at this Sunday's GA. We have to align the events in a way where people can actually hear it and have it go into their head. I mean, it's not just going online. It's if I go up to somebody and I really know that person, they're going to remember something better than if they go online. And getting people to be present at these at these things where their contribution is valid, and it's not just us creating a brand. It's us creating a, kind of a, a method for them to be involved. In the long run. Yeah, there was less than a day's notice for that. At least for me. I don't know if other people I, I sent it out the night before through text messages and that's that was Bentley told yeah, me that she she wanted me to do that and that so I text everybody I had on my phone about that that was happening. Yeah, that's <laughs> and that was, and it was the night before. It was like that doesn't give me much time to do much of anything. Still learning, sir, let's do it again, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's um, well, and you know, and the other, the flip side to that is, is that they could have brought the cameras to one of the meetings where we're all, all already at, and then just taken us aside, you know, individuals aside for five minutes and gotten the footage, you know, instead yeah. of trying to make a separate event. I think that we have this problem where we're all about making separate meetings and separate events, and each of us having our own starring, shining day for our project. Mm -hmm. And in reality, way more people show up when we consolidate and synthesize. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the focus. But again, um, if we want to. Well, well, if it is an artistic view, like if somebody wants a certain amount of sunlight or a certain yeah. scene, sure, and I'm not. They chose Hollywood Cemetery at a certain time for a reason, as an artist's point of view. I'm not arguing against that. I'm no, just... no, no. I'm just meaning the artist needs to better their argument, and they need to compel people in a different way, and they need to use their the resources they have available to advertise the event. I mean, that's what's not being done. It's just this communicative channel that's being blocked, where yeah. they're not going to the right sources. Um, I got a point of clarification on that um, because I heard that. So I I heard about the event from one person with with less in less than twenty four hours notice. But I heard it was actually someone else's event. So who who actually? Jason Brown. So yeah, oh, it, so it was, it like was outside of our occupied. Yeah, and it was you know occupied the hood, and I mean likewise. I mean, I mean yeah. you know, it, we didn't have a GA to get that information out. So I think that you know. We're talking in circles when the circumstances were just simply different than they normally are. If we had a GA, everyone would have known about it. We can't get mad at people for not coming. That's not right, you know? I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I like what you're saying about um, adding in the human face and the human aspect to our brain and campaign. We need to have a diversity of tactics with this either way. You know, we need to be approaching this from multiple angles. I think it's dangerous to put a face on the side of a bus to associate with Occupy because then they become the face of the movement and we're going to get bogged down in GA for 17 and a half hours about it and someone's going to walk out with a broken nose and a few pieces of glass in their left eye. Um, it's an information about how you look at it. I mean, sure, but when, when, when you consider the, the branding aspect of things, why don't we just start being more willing to wear Occupy RVA shirts and then we have the brand on us, we're the ones walking around and our face is attached to it. We have one to wear. Exactly. We just need to make them. Okay. You know, we just need to have that silk screen out more often. And I think, does that sort of address, like, the idea of having the human face to the logo? Yeah, I think that's, like, I think no matter what comes out of this, that is the first step that should come out of this. It's just yeah. getting more things with the, with the name and the logo made. Sweatshirts. Sweatshirts yeah. be cold. If there is going to be cold. I mean... Yeah, and that can happen. that could be a certain campaign that comes out of it once we actually have a branding campaign up and going. I think, yeah. you know. Um, one of the well, another thing that I'm um, I've, I've been talking with Ron, and I wanted to talk with you about it. That's why I was blowing up your phone the other day. Yeah. Um, is we're we're working on, and I was telling something outside, um, getting some pseudo absurd actions going on around town and videotaping them and seeing how viral we can't get them to go exactly like that. <laughs> how viral we can't get them to go online. I um I spent like six hours the other day uh, researching this mark or um, this advertising theory for social media called propagation planning. Um, and a guy named Griffin Farley is like one of the world's leading experts, and he has this really beautifully uh, thorough blog about it. And it's the idea that um. 
Your target audience isn't necessarily the people who see your content, it's the people they tell about it. Because when you look at the stats on our Facebook, you know, our talking about Occupy Richmond went from 6,493 down to 400. Right. If you look at the insights, it's pretty much the same people viewing our page all the time. Right. Um, and also understanding how Facebook al algorithms like uh, tailor your content to what you're interested in. Um, likewise, the website statistics that are looking similarly meager as of late. Um, so w with that in mind, um, there are a bunch of like different coefficients for shareability and appeal and blah, 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 blah. Um, so we're starting to put together a series of videos that we're going to try to make go viral um, that are interesting both to our people, but so interesting that our people will feel compelled to share them. And those people will either find something funny in or sexy or amusing or whatever and then share those again because we need to start reaching a wider audience. Um, so we're working with um, Occupy Norfolk and a couple other Occupies to put together a video that sort of connects the dots between like media consolidation and the NDAA and how that affects you and a bunch of different other things into like a cool six minute video with beautiful people speaking in it and really cool imagery, flashy, blah, blah. Um, doesn't need to be something Occupy official. We're going to put it together anyway to try to bring some, some views in. Um, but in the process of doing that, you, um, one of the other concepts of propagation planning is lead time. So you have to try to build up to the video and get your traffic increased anyway. So we're going to have someone stand on the street corner, like preaching about the NDAA and how bad it is, and people watching, and then a big white van come up, and folks in masks are going to hop out, snatch them up, throw them in the van, and drive away. We're going to put that online. Maybe do something a little bit more creative with it. That was done with the, um, the anti-smoking campaign in the early 90s. There was one that was very similar where all these sterile guys, men in white, come out and they throw some a smoker in the van and they drive off and then they have this next scene. where. So that would be a very interesting campaign to look at because um, it was very similar. It was like almost exactly the same. Um, it, was, it was actually very effective. Um, like several bans on smoking indoors happened like simultaneously afterwards. Um, the truth ads, that's what they were called. Cool. And that was a 90s approach of getting people to see the effects of the tobacco the truth industry. ads? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The truth yeah. campaign. Yeah. That, was a, um, that was one of the more successful campaigns I've ever seen. Another um, really interesting viral video is where you had some folks up in D.C on public property, selling lemonade for five cents, or maybe they were giving it out for free, I don't remember. But it was like the lemonade stand thing, and they're just like, sell them lemonade, and then the cops come up and arrest them because they're handing it out to kids, or maybe it was free, I don't I heard remember. It was free. Yeah, it might have been free lemonade. I, I can pull up the video. Um, but just sort of uh, evocative imagery in video form that's short enough for someone to share it, watch it, and get the brand in their face, right? More redundancy, more redundancy, trying to direct traffic to our site. And then once they get to, their, to our site, they need to have some content that engages them with our site. Um, so the next step of that would be us, you know, developing and so like, well, we are the 99% I mean, that's, that's what, what, you're, what you're talking about though is, is still like, you're talking about, you're talking about advertising and PR, essentially. And Which that's, is that's a tied question. Into branding. It is tied into branding, absolutely. But that's a question of like that's not you know. And I brought that up before, but that's not that's not what media's mandate is from the GA. You know, our 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 our, our mandate is mm -hmm. informational. We've run into this problem right. before, and and like, do we want to step in the same cow pie again? Is the question. You know? um, and. Well, and if, if the group as a whole decides they want to do that, that's fine. I'm down with that. But my concern is that if everybody were to, if we were to do an advertising subgroup, everybody in this room would probably be a member of that advertising subgroup. I mean, because that would eventually become our problem no matter what. Well, then that, but either way, it's still something that we have to bring to GA and say, well, we're part of media and we think this is something that we should be doing. You know what is the what is the consensus on this? Is there a consensus on the proposal? Blah blah blah. And and even if we start a PR, a, a specific PR working group, and then everybody is also doing that, then at least it's you know the PR working group has its mandate from the GA, right? And is then, empowered to do these things, exactly. Right? Because we are not. No, I mean, and that's all we do. You know, that's the solution to the situation. Do we want to? Do we want to form a PR subcommittee? I think that that would bring in some fresh blood to media. 
I think that there are members of Occupy Richmond who would latch on to the idea of a PR group in the same way that we had new people latch on to the print media group, right? A different name will attract people. Right now, media thinks that we just mess with the Facebook and the website, even though we do so much more. But think, that's what they see. I think also we have a call for video artists because we have yeah. I mean, we have different types of recording devices, but I think specifically finding individuals who recruiting individuals who can actually make these compact viral videos. I mean, I can I am very good at directing and orchestrating bodies within I'm a director, so I direct within the space of the camera, but I can't do the camera itself. So mm -hmm. you need somebody or a couple of people who can pioneer that particular tool for that purpose in Absolutely. a PR group. So maybe that should be mentioned with GA. I don't know. Recruit, recruit, recruit. I think um, one of our hurdles on that front is having an editing space. I volunteered to edit. I have the experience. I just don't have a place to do it and the equipment to do it with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't talked to Ira in a couple, in like a week. She's been in, she's been in New Orleans, but I think her. Um, what she had, her opportunity that she had mentioned to us a couple few weeks ago was um, a space downtown, mm -hmm. off broad. Um, it's, it's her place off of Second Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, and she rec I mean she was like it would be a workspace and we could have there's a couple printers and we could. I mean, it would be a nice little mm. office. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, Bentley and them are looking for. Places, which again, very one day soon we may have a office space available to us. But that needs to be. We need to continue to talk to Bentley about that and mm -hmm. yeah. figure out what's going on with that. No, so. like the It's not just the space; it's the equipment also. What do you think? Yeah, like a USB charger. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. So, so I mean, how do we feel about these things? So then, do you, do, you, do, do, do as, as media, do we want to do we want to go to the GA and say, hey, will you empower us to start doing some advertising, some branding, and making these decisions, or do we want to go to media and say, or to the GA and say, hey, we're coming into this point in time where we realize we need to start spreading the message a little bit further because we are only empowered to convey information. We realize that we aren't necessarily empowered to start creating branding campaigns on behalf of Occupy Richmond. We either want this power or we recommend the creation of a PR work group. We also acknowledge that there are lots and lots and lots of work groups right now, and perhaps that not, that's not the most effective way to consolidate our talents. Um, how do we want to approach this? How do people feel? How do, uh, let's do a little temp check real quick. What do we think about just asking if media can have this authority to start doing this? How do we feel about trying to start a PR subcommittee of media? that would have its own meetings so that we can have very, very targeted meetings. Um, how do we feel about having a completely separate PR work group that has no interaction with media, even though it would be made of the same people? Okay. Who, who um, are you one of the point people potentially for this? And are you aware of who else might be? Um, I know Laura would be down. Um, I would definitely be very interested in it. Alex, and you mentioned some interests a long time ago. Will, anything media involved, you're going to be there. Um, <laughs> Jamie, no? Mark? Is that something you're interested in? I, I, I would personally love it if you were there, because I think you bring a very interesting perspective that would allow us to start framing our message to um, different communities. Because you're very locked into the LGBTQ community. I'm ashamedly not, you know, um, th those sorts of things. So you could you could bring that perspective. You know, how do we how do we you know create a branding campaign or a campaign of some sort, you know, targeted to these particular communities? How can we address their needs efficiently under the Occupy platform and help them feel welcome? But no pressure. Um, it, it, this is something I was interested in, and I actually wanted to talk to you about it after the meeting. Uh, two of the things you mentioned, I want to talk to you about after the meeting. Um, one being the billboards and one being something else I already forgot. So I'm going to write it down and I'm remember. I think we should have. Um, see the thing. Yeah, that's all I'm going to have. So, so my my concern right now is: Do we have consensus about what we want to do on this? Okay, yeah, she's about to reapproach it. 
have we have we exhausted the topic of branding? Well, no. I was going to ask if if it's okay for like one more to check after having gone through the options. Do we think it's appropriate to make a subcommittee of media that focuses on PR? How do we feel about that as a group? Are you are you about to say different options? The only other option would be to ask that media gets that power itself. I'm I'm completely for as long as we actually follow through and and stick with it. It's not like some it's not some idea that we'll mm -hmm. discuss and then. We, Two weeks later, we've completely forgotten about it. I mean, this is something that needs Laura, to do. Yeah, you want to point it with me? I the branding events have already been happening. Yeah. Like I've done ten theater workshops. I've done ten street theater things. It's just a matter of recording it. Yeah. And I think once we really, I'm glad this is finally happening. Um, and my question would be: Is at the strategy threshing uh, at the meetings they had for 2012 strategy? Have they already mentioned at those two meetings a component of that is PR and branding? So I think this is important. I, think I mean, it's really important. to add as a component to that strategy 2012 and to bring that proposal to the GA, and I'm willing to help you, Josh, on maybe typing that up for Sunday. Let's do it. Um, and if Got we get consensus on this I'm being down. a component, because um, the, the things are already happening, and then we can bring those events to the media group to advertise from the GA consensus, you know? Mm -hmm. Cool, so I mean, are we on the same page about this at the moment? Mm -hmm. Cool. So we're um, gonna seek GA permission to form a PR subcommittee? Subcommittee of media. And to start a marketing campaign, to start working on a marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Yes, start that. to yeah. add to the 2012 strategy, right. uh, strategy that's been uh, Graham proposed right. and they've been working on. It has not been added to it. Right. Okay. And I think that, you know, once we have the goals and whatnot formulated, then it's going to make it a whole lot easier on us to figure out what we're branding because then we'll know what reunites us all, right? We don't even know that yet. Other than society's fucked up. So, does, so in light of that, does, since we're, since we're going to take this branding conversation and put it on a subgroup, does that mean that we're good on that tonight? And we can start talking about that amongst themselves. I'll make myself very available for this. This is something I'm familiar with and passionate about. Well, I'm not passionate about advertising, but I'm passionate about making this word spread. So, um, and Laura and I, I will be. I watch Mad Men. What? Sorry. You watch Mad Men? Mad, yeah, Mad Men, yeah. yeah. And I watched Queer as Folk, so I'm well acquainted with that. <laughs> as well. Oh, it was my dream for the longest time to just be like some stupidly wealthy ad exec, like kicking it in my office oh, most of the wow. time, and then I can't say what else I'd be doing in front of that camera. <laughs> but it involves lots of boys and lots of partying, <laughs> and lots of kicking back like this. Um, but then I realized that advertising steals your soul, so I didn't take the internship at the Mark Agency. Oh God, that's a bullet there. Yeah. No. That place does kill you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it would have been an internship at the Martin Agency. I would know all the evil tricks to make our message spread. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of which, I actually, I would love to throw this out. There are about six people at the Martin Agency that I'm at least somewhat acquainted, acquainted with who have said that they are willing to do a lot on our website for us and to help us like make some really stellar graphics and like stuff. So, just want to throw that out at y'all. We have a resource of worldly professionals. They're not doing it on behalf of the Martin Agency, are they? No, oh, they're just like sorry. people I know. <laughs> one of them's a guy I work with who's a friend of mine. Another one's this girl I go dancing with. She's like their lead graphic designer. They've been to Occupy. They've given us money. One of them gave me a camera to use. My homies get their asses on board. They, well, they just need to know very specifically what we want. And then, you know, then they'll do it. Um, so... Maybe next meeting we should have a conversation about our website and what we'd like to see our websites look like and they can like flash it up for us without opening their eyes. It's always good to have someone come in and I mean invite them to a meeting and have them and just, just show them just and show them what we have. Awesome. Yeah. And they can talk to us about what they see could happen. Somebody who hasn't been looking at it for the past. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm yeah. burnt out on it. I, I, every time I go to do something on it, I'm just I'll, end up staring at it and just going, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and then just then just going on then just changing the tab to Reddit and just and then What does it say back? Huh? Yeah. Well my computer and I have conversations so it, um, hmm. it, What's it's, your head though? No, this is my girlfriend. 
Do you, do you make a little hand puppet when you're talking? When the computer's talking? <laughs> so, do we need a break before our next part? Um, I would like to smoke, um, but we're going to talk about Google next. I hate smokers. Oh, wait, we've got a Facebook admin group report back after that. Right, sorry, Facebook. Which we need to do. It's early for a break, I think. Um, yeah, we have an if we don't all agree, then I can... Yeah, let's wait for the two-hour mark. Anyway, oh, what? <laughs> Eight thirty. What? Can we compromise? Right, hey, whatever. This is hey, as an all smoker, I love that. After, After the next action. thing, <laughs> okay. Queen. Facebook admin group report back. Yes. Um, yeah. I fucked okay. up. I, I I already said it before. I already. Hell out of me, man. I fucked up already. Um, with that, I posted the event for the um for the rally uh for, at the general assembly before it was approved by the general assembly. My bad. Um. But the, in my defense, the uh, the assembly workshop is just a is a uh, direct action meeting. It's not a event per se. Wait. So that's okay, so that's a direct action event uh, um, meeting, not a an event. Where person. is that, William? Did you have this? Where is that event? The workshop. That. So right the friendship now. meeting house. There are gonna be two of them next week. You mean the no, the, no. the, the non-violent non-escalation? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the Virginia yes, General Assembly gotcha. workshop. So yeah, okay. And that's the one where we're gonna where I'm having some organizers from various organizations come and, and work with us to get a to strategize for going after the general assembly. Right, right. I read that. Yes. Um, as, as, far as, as, as far as I understand, all you have to do. Is put the name of the work group that's hosting it in front of it, colon, and then okay, yeah, and that's all you have to do. All right, uh, Jeremy, you had something. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, I put the report back item on the agenda, and I'm just looking for a sense of have you guys discussed your policy, how you're going to approach this yet? Do you want to take this opportunity to do so? Can we? Can we? Can we take the next like fifteen minutes and just as a group that way, like the three of us will just throw some stuff out there and y'all can help guide us on this. Because I had um, in my mind a process that we were following and it doesn't seem to be what's happening. Um, and that was that for sharing work group meetings or, or for work group meetings and work group events that aren't necessarily like totally consensed on at the general assembly. We would encourage the work groups to make an event on their Facebook page under their name, like the facilitation work group meeting that happened on Monday or Tuesday. I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. No. And then the Occupy Richmond Facebook page would go on to their Facebook page and share their event for them. So that way it's not an actual Occupy Richmond event, but Occupy Richmond is still promoting its internal goings. And then what we would make events for on our page. We're simply big events that Occupy Richmond is endorsing, like the, the statewide unconference, or you know, if we decide to reoccupy somewhere, or yeah, yeah. You know exactly. I know exactly. So, how does this fit in with the new repository on Google? Are you, do you see events being on the Google Calendar? Yeah, I mean, completely separate from this. What what I saw the Google Calendar is where we utilize what we got. It's out there. Well, that wasn't exactly. Um, <laughs> I asked. I asked basically that what you just said at a uh, strategy meeting the other night, and the response I heard back from you, which is why I thought you were about to say that, was um, if we do it that way, um, it doesn't get onto the website in that right side. Of course, that's gone at this that point is, anyway. I didn't say that, but that is true. But remember. <laughs> What's on the side of the website now is it's not it's, Facebook. That's well, yeah. Google yeah. Calendar. It's kind of irrelevant now. Or can Why we not get both? links in the, the Google Calendar? Put the Facebook sure. link. You put it in the put search. Put a link um, into the. Put a link into the in the in the Google Calendar, but also put a link to the Google Calendar to the web. Put a link to the website in every event. Absolutely. So that people are going, you see what I'm saying? So that there's a, a redundancy. Redundancy. So people are going from yeah. one to the next one, and they're checking the whole thing out. And put the web, and put the website on it. All, all, the, every yes. video at the beginning and at yeah. the end, and yes. then also in the description too. And also put like sometimes for more information. Yeah. I actually have I not been always good about putting it in the description, but yeah. I mean, what is, is there is it possible to embed 
the Google Calendar, um, like if we were to click on mm -hmm. more information, embed, so it, it stays on our website when they click on that more information instead of going to a Google website? I can look into slicker ways to do that. The way that it is right now is you're using the stock Google Calendar widget that they give you. Mm -hmm. And that was just the easiest way. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, but I can look into it. Because that would be, it's under the media be really cool to have to, so yeah. that all that to those that we can have almost customizable you know, event pages on our own website for descriptions and things like that. I mean, I don't understand that is possible. If it's, if it's embedded, I understand you're limited on customization, but at least you have it on your own frame of your own website. And, you but there are other options that I can look into. That's all, okay. that's all I'll say at this point. <laughs> <laughs> cool, but um, back to Facebook. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Rich, did I cut you off? Can I, can I ask the goal? This might... <clears throat> my... <clears throat> Okay, instead of asking what I was going to ask, um, <clears throat> would, would having that pop up in a different window accomplish the same goal? It, I mean, it's, it's the, you're giving people the information one way or the other, like they're, whether or not they're going to Google or whether or not they're on our site. Um, but there is, there's definitely a difference for, for keeping it on our site and, and as opposed to them going to the Google Calendar and to Google site. It, it's a, there's a difference in the amount of traffic that we generate and... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all for uh, these things actually popping up in a different window to, to actually kind of keep people at the site to a degree. And uh, is that possible with the Google Calendar? That's what, I think that's what we're, we're asking about. That's what yeah, that's what William was asking about. Is there a way to keep it on the website so that instead of when you click on it on the sidebar, right now it takes you to Google Calendar. Okay, what I'm saying is in a different window. Uh, oh, oh, just a different. So you stay on the website and then you get this thing in a different window. I'll look into it. I mean, I know it can be done on like you. you right. I know it can be done on specific other aspects of the website right. where you can have an open. Uh, populate in a different window as opposed to staying in the same. Right. Um, like a link, if you have a link on our website, you can make it so that it opens in a different window as opposed to taking you away from the website, which is my preference. Right. Oh, Jeremy, um, that's easy. The website is, I'm oh, sorry, I was just, I just realized this. Um, the website is a little bit skewed since you put the, um, the Google Calendar on it. Yeah, I know. You see, it's pushing everything to the left. Um, Ooh, I'm pretty bad. Uh, on that note, did, I don't know if you're aware, comments have come back. Historical comments from October on some of the different pages. What? They just popped up? <laughs> I don't know, they're on some of the different pages. They're on at least two pages on there. Okay, just like, um, we have jumped to the discussion to website and Facebook. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Cool. So that's <laughs> yeah, we're talking about sorry, Facebook. <laughs> um, no, it, well, we we drifted because we were talking about events, and we were talking about you know what what are we going to use Facebook events for? Um, and my understanding was that we were using the Occupy Richmond Facebook page to uh, make event pages for large events that the GA has officially endorsed, right? As, as you know, as Occupy Richmond events, we can then. Um, so we'll make those event pages. It keeps us from having 1,500 different events when someone clicks on events on the Occupy Richmond Facebook page. Gives each of those a little bit more oomph when people are looking at that. Um, we're co consistently going to use the Occupy Richmond Facebook page to try to redirect people to the website. Um, we would encourage work groups who have Facebook pages to make events themselves. If they send us the link, we're happy to promote it for them. Um, but we're, not, we're just not making their events for them. It takes less work for us, and then it also, it, it also directs people to the other Facebook pages so that people um, can go see, oh, hey, there's a direct action Facebook page. Now I can keep up with what's going on in direct action without bugging media for not getting all the information to us. Mm -hmm. So it puts a little bit more onus on the workers to do the work for themselves instead of yelling at media for not doing it for them. Not, not all um, work groups have Facebook pages, right? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think I think that during week one, we made Facebook pages for pretty much every single worker. If they don't have one, they should get one. 
Arts and crafts, I know, does not have them. Facilitation, someone said you'd like, last night it hadn't been updated since, like, you know, had it October or something. We haven't had a facilitation so. team. Yeah. yeah. But we have the pitch. Yeah. So. Oh. Well, you got the password for it? Um, it's, it's, well, it's a Facebook um, page, so it's not password. Um, oh, okay. Run, but I can easily add yeah. administrators to it. The comments are back. Um, so that's you know that's not an issue. If anyone is interested in being an admin on that and helping update it, I would assume Coco and facilitation would take that over. I just happened to make it back on October fifteenth or whatever. Okay. Um, so you know so so then they would make the. Does everyone understand what I'm saying by like these couple of degrees of separation and how that works on Facebook? Well, it's still unclear on how this integrates with how we're keeping track of events on Google. Where did we get to Google? Because the, the calendar on the website. Does the calendar on Google mirror the Facebook stuff? Is that how we're running this? Here. Or I'm are we asking manually... you how right. it reflects. Well, I didn't set up the calendar, so I don't know. Here. Okay. This is the calendar. Right. Um, now, whether or not it mirrors Facebook is dependent on whether or not the people who are whether or not it's getting put directly into the Google But the Google Calendar, calendar what, is on the website, right? Yes. Who's okay. administrating Google Calendar? Anybody who has access to the, um, to the email. Media Gmail. Gmail. So, can I just try to clarify what he's asking then? Yes. What you're asking is, does the, does the Facebook protocol and procedure have any bearing over what we put on the Orbit Calendar on the I, website? Um, I'm more generally asking just... Are you aware of Google Calendar? And how do you see that fitting in with the strategy you are articulating for Facebook event posting? Well, what I would assume is that um, anything, any events that are like related to or put on by an Orva work group or put on by Occupy Richmond as a as an overarching idea, right? We go on the Occupy Richmond calendar on the website. But for Facebook's purposes and understanding it as a social media tool and not as our primary tool of information dissemination, but as a particular tool for information dissemination, mm -hmm. that we try to not clutter the official Occupy Richmond Facebook page because that's getting the most traffic and we want what we put up there to have a whole lot of focus. Um, and because a lot of the work groups have their own Facebook pages, that's where they should put their direct action work group events. They shouldn't expect us to write that for them, right? Does that, does that make sense? And it, at least in terms of Facebook events, like what I'm talking about, now how that affects the website calendar, I'm not sure because I wasn't involved in the conversation about that. That's just how I would see them integrating. Can we at least just say that if you get notified by, by a group on Facebook about a work group event or meeting or something, mm -hmm. And you end up sharing it. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and add it to the calendar too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that was also the yeah. issue. Um, I I definitely agree that uh, work groups that are hosting or sponsoring events should write out the information in as complete a way as possible. Um, though, some I I think a stumbling block here is that the meeting before the meeting of December 21st or whatever media meeting, whatever date that was, approximately that day, um, we can sense upon a process where if it's not, if it's, if it's GA endorsed, it says, you know, GA endorsed, and if it's work group endorsed, it says work group endorsed, and then if there's a third category for something else. Um, oh, I guess caucus endorsed. Mm -hmm. um, and it just specifically said that within the framework of the uh, posting. Um, I wish you'd been at that meeting because we knew that was the main thing that you wanted to talk about. I don't recall us saying that we had to specify that it was, it was a, in, in, like in the wording or a title or a description or anything, that it was endorsed by whatever body, just that it, as long as we know it was, then we can post it. Otherwise, I mean, I, I believe it's in the minutes. I believe it's in some in the documentation that came out of the meeting. So what would that do? I mean, if we're under the structure now that we're only putting for events that are from the GA or larger events, 
And if a work group comes up to us and says, could you post this event, and they have it all typed up, you know, hopefully, and like all clear, all the details, I mean, are we able to put those events up if they come up to us, a work group comes up to us, or should we say to them, no, we want them, you guys to use your own Facebook? Like, what should be that action taken? Wouldn't we say, yes, please make it on your um, own Facebook, and then we're absolutely willing to share it, because, I mean, if we're sharing articles on other websites, I don't see why we wouldn't share the activities of our internal structure. Yeah. Um, and plus, then they type all the information out, and then we can just copy and paste that to the Google Calendar. They've already got it all typed out. So my, my question is, are, do people know they can do that? Do people know? Is that what people know? Because I still think there are people who send events through email, or tell us in person, or put it on their own Facebook. So maybe we need to solidify that action at GA or something where they can know, hey, like if you have an event, clarify, Submission guidelines. clarify it through the GA consent if you want, clarify it through your work group, type it up, and put it on your own Facebook, and we'll share it. But we will not create the event for you. Mm. Well, you just mentioned that oh, during. We'll copy and paste it to, to Google. So it'll be yeah, we'll get it on the Google Calendar for you. We're just not going to make events. I mean, it, just to throw out, Occupy Wall Street doesn't even have an events section on their Facebook. Everything is directed to their website. Everything. Yeah. And we so, should do that. So besides this brand A PR work group, if we are allowed to by the GA, we are not creators really of information. We're just distributors of the information. Mm -hmm. Is anyone taking minutes? Now? I am. Cool. Um, so, okay, so we are we good on events? Because there's the broader status updates that we need to talk about too, um, right? I have one last comment on the events. Oh, sure. Um, I would also like to try to make sure that we know who is making these events so that if... I want to make sure that... Somebody has to be bottom line. Yeah, because... Um, Alright, so I, I'm concerned about you know, the image that we put forward to people, to the general public. So if we're misspelling words, having really bad grammar in our, in our descriptions, you know, we're you know, using lead speak in there, that we need to make sure that we have some standards before we share anything. And if it's not appropriately um, worded or punctuated, I don't, I personally, Will, you know, I agree. Who just posted apart. the recent update? I did. So you used two exclamation points after a reminder. Did I? There, there are, I mean, if, 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 if you want to talk about that, there are three exclamation points in a single post, which makes us seem way overexcited. I mean, if, if you want to talk about the tool of branding, the tool of marketing. Right, well, that, that's that's so, scary. That's extremely <laughs> minor. That's extremely I, minor, though. Yeah. I care. Well, it, it, I think it's a relevant thing that he brought up. I mean, yeah, that's, okay. I mean, that's it's true. You're talking I mean, about the difference between professionalism and and yeah, that's the two the things are not necessarily related. Okay. But a bottom line events because um, whenever I go on the Gmail or talk to people in there, I, I'm getting just from the natural occurrences that are happening. People are coming to me with events because they know that I'm going to plug them into media. So that's kind of what my role has kind of turned out to be anyway as far as media information goes. Um, I just don't know, am I giving it then to the three administrators or am I, are we keep, maybe we should keep, okay, maybe I should keep <laughs> um, a composite every week of which events are sent to us through Gmail, Facebook, and word of mouth. Please. That, that needs to happen because... Um, I mean, um, because, the, you know, that way we know every week which events are coming forward. And if somebody says, well, mine didn't get hurt, I'm like, well, obviously you didn't go through Gmail, Facebook, or word of mouth. So there's something that you do not, it's not on us. We can't be taking the blame anymore for people not, they're just effectively communicating or them telling their friends at a bar or at a party and not actually. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I mean, it's not our responsibility to go on to people's individual profiles and be like, hey, how come I'm finding out about this event on your profile wall? I mean, I'm rather than just sharing it. As, as a minister, as a minister in my perfect world, there's, there's people say, I need you to post this, 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 and this. I can do it if it's not. If I gotta go find it and go right. through different email accounts, and I got six email accounts. I'm sorry if I missed sure. one of your emails. I mean, there's, you know, if I, I can't keep up with all the information in 20 different places. I need somebody to tell me this needs to be on the website. This 
doesn't need to be on the website, but it needs to be promoted this way. I mean, just tell me and I'll do it. I have no problem doing it. I just don't know to do it at the time, and that's where I get let's, the Let's also attempt then to start remembering to ask that question, because a lot of people are not, like, they just really don't, they don't know. The people who are not involved with media don't know how many different things we're trying to keep in the air. And it's just like here. Especially with the General, with the general Assembly coming up, I'm going to be at half brain capacity anyway, so... Uh, you go first. To, don't take on too much stuff, mm -hmm. first thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got, we got a spear finger over here. Um, and, and to that end, did you get the uh, email I forwarded you, the, no, the minutes from the strategy meeting? Are you aware of that? Are you, I forwarded yes. it to you as well. And just just re raising awareness about it at the moment. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I got it. And uh, an also event for next week, the VCU professors and JAM, their de-escalation nonviolent workshops. I don't believe they're on the Facebook. Yeah. It's Tuesday and Thursday. They're on the calendar. They're on the, yeah. they're on the calendar. I, well, they're on G calendar. But that's on the website, on the right hand side. Yeah. So, okay, so point of clarification, sorry, why are they not on the Facebook as well? Or because they're not GA consensed? Because they haven't been GA consensed, and that's something that, like, an individual right. is just Number one, on. and number two, then are they coming directly from one of our um, work groups? Yes, they're coming from the education work group at VCU. Okay, well, that's... So, been, this wait. has been a workshop and planned for two months, and I know, they've brought it up at their work group meetings. They were never asked to bring it to a proposal because the new proposals that were just put forward for the Facebook protocol is just recent two weeks, and we have not had a GA. So within the time frame of a GA, they have not had a GA to come consensus. That's, that's... Oh, so they, I just they, made a Google Doc. Oh. And they, they can still use their... I mean, they have a Facebook page. They can still use their Facebook page to make the event. You... You said the education work group at VCU? Yeah, they're not Do you mean the Occupy Education Work Group? What can you clarify? Mm -hmm. They're called the Chai Party. And they were it's a group of radical VCU professors oh, who So then that's their that's their responsibility to make to make a Facebook event. That's not our Well they aren't on Facebook. Yeah. <coughs> it gets it gets tricky because some people aren't yeah, um, Mark and Liz are both on Facebook. And I think, no, not mm -hmm. Vivian, no, not Vivian. And if Jam is Jam. kind of contacting it. Sorry, so this isn't just one particular event. I think because of the conditions of people maybe not being on Facebook, <laughs> um, they just don't know. They don't know what communicative things to go through. So I told them two, three weeks ago, whatever that meeting was, Mark, that I was like, if you need to email media, email media. And they did. <sighs> They, they emailed media. Uh, media then posted on the intercom. Um, I know it's also on the general listserv, and I know that Jam mentioned it at the strategy meeting a couple days ago, and it's also on the Google Calendar. So it's, it's, it is in a variety of media forms. It's just not on the Facebook, probably because it hasn't been consensed on, and they... Yeah, but fair enough. Totally fair enough. I would to be fair, this is the first time I've ever heard about it. Yeah, and I think they're going to be ready. You were at the strategy meeting when it was announced. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, this isn't the first that I'm hearing of it, but... <laughs> Josh needs to get <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Well, I had one about 10 minutes ago, so I thought I'd use two hands to see if I could yeah. hop in the sack. Oh. Um, I made a Google Doc on the Occupy Richmond Media page that says events, and it has some headlines like submission date, event date, Event title, event description, Wait, point of contact. It's under the Occupy Richmond Gmail account, Google Doc. Well, but the thing, okay. Well, can, I, can I finish? I'm sorry. So it's okay. Okay. Point of contact, event location, event time, checked by Facebook on the website, GA endorsed. That way we have a single location where all of our events are if you're going to bottom line the events. Yeah. Everyone in this room has access to it, including the people who are bottom lining the calendar, including the people who are bottom lining the events, including the people who work with the Facebook. That way we have a single location that we can sign off on who did what, has all the information that we need. The only thing I would add to that is like another spreadsheet, which kind of is like, it birthed itself, but didn't actually go anywhere quite yet. That's great, wonderful. Just put initials um, next to each new entry so we can we know yeah. who the last updated, the like the date of the last update, the, um, that way they don't get outdated. Yep. Check my Facebook on the website, GA Endorse, so that you can initial it, and then at the very beginning... <laughs> I take it you like 
the spreadsheets. <laughs> and then at the beginning it has submission dates so we know when, when it was submitted and also has the event date so we know when the event is. I mean, just that way we have some yeah. sense of accountability. Thank you. Does everyone agree that this is going to be a decent single location to have all of our events? Sure. I, make sure you give it a name so uh, well, yeah. they know which one it is. I have a concern about it. I don't think it'll get utilized. No, it's going to be the chance. Yeah. I, I, well, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, you know, and, and, and it also reminded me of that other spreadsheet you were talking about uh -huh. many a meeting ago. Is yeah. anything happening with that? Yeah, Stacy and I are working on it. Um, like, it's just that organization has kind of been put, like, on the back burner until now. But now that it's on a front burner, I could see it going somewhere. If we all know that's there. You go into your, the Gmail account. You know, I go in, like, once a day and check the email, and you go in the documents. Or something that needs to be communicated to communications so that they can organize. The, it, should, it shouldn't be our responsibility to do communications. The communications work group needs to communicate that message to all the other work groups that that's how to communicate with us. Well, we can communicate through our group announcement at the beginning of a meeting sometime. It that's doesn't fine. get everybody, but... That's fine, but and once, we, once we announce it, then it's communications responsibility to maintain that. Otherwise, it's just not. I mean, we, we're taking on too many things if we're doing that. I I'd like to say I feel like we have exhausted this topic. We we know what we what we're doing. Um, I think we also need to talk from the Facebook. Oh, I just had something about Facebook statuses. That's what I want to move to. Is there anything we need to discuss there? Well, do you guys have an idea of how you're approaching status updates on Facebook? I think that we can get together outside of right now. Okay. Talk about it if y'all are willing. Put together some guidelines. Put our heads together, and then we'll bring those. Th we'll actually we'll put them on the agenda, and then we'll be at the next meeting to talk about it. Okay. Very good. Is that what you? Silver? Is everyone okay with that? Did Silver, did you have something you wanted to add? I to just I just think it's important that then this really kind of address what William was talking about with misspelling or knowing who's doing stuff is. I think we should be initialing all the stuff we create in the, as individuals, and I've been doing it with status updates on the media team page, and uh, I don't know, I think it's just good to keep track of that. And I see other occupies doing that too. Do you think that we should initial within the status itself or initial as a comment? Mm. I think it should be the status in the itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's I'm down with that. In the what? In okay. the status in the Initial in the status itself, okay. not comment. Um, I do have a question about communication. Uh, um, okay. Is that okay? Like, just, just, what? I, can I respond directly to that? Oh, yeah. I will try to do that. Um, if I forget, which I do often, then mm -hmm. I will put it in the comment, but I will try to do it in the status, but don't yell at me if it's in, in, the, in the comments. A lot of times I forget, too, and I just yeah. delete yeah, the comment and repost it with the initial. Yeah, it's a little bit different it, with it the sucks when page, four, um, Six people okay, have already right. liked it by the time you realize that. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't get nearly as right. much traffic. Yeah. yeah, well, you brought the idea of like sending these, these um, spreadsheets to communication. Um, I think we only have the two spreadsheets right now. That the one that's completely we to deal with event planning, well, event coordination on our on our information end, and then a spreadsheet that's being created for media contacts. Um, so those are, the, those are the only two up and going and all data bases we have currently. Is that correct? Do we have any other branch? Well, I mean, for for this discussion, yeah. They're up and running. They're, they've they've been created as far as being implemented into any kind of tool.